All right. Well, welcome, everyone. I think we'll start with approving the minutes from the August 22nd, 2023. Oh, excuse me. We have to do attendance by roll call. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, Denise Barr's Domans. Here. Courtney Meyer. Here. Mary Carney. Here. Sharon Parsons. Here. Uh, Brianna Quinn. Here. And Irene Costello. Maybe he doesn't have a microphone, but we can see that she's here. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, I believe Courtney sent around the minutes to those who are at the last meeting. Um, or they were in the folder. Did, uh, did anybody have any questions or additions or corrections to that? To those. Motion to approve is written. Thank you, Denise. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, roll call vote. Um, I'm just going to do it by going Aye. across my screen. Sharon Parsons. I wasn't here, so I don't know if I can approve. Thank you. All right. So you abstain. Um, Mary Carney also was not a member at the time, so she will abstain. Denise Barstow Mans. Aye. Courtney Meyer. Aye. Um, Brianna Quinn was, in pre was present, but was not a member at the time. And Irene Costello was present, but not a member at the time. So passes by who, oh, I vote, yes, Diane West. Um, so passes by who was present. Thank you. All right. I'd also just like to extend a warm welcome to our new members, Mary Carney, Irene Costello, and Brianna Quinn. Welcome. Yes, welcome. So glad to have you here with us. All right, so now I need to ask for a vote to move any other new business forward so we can discuss the PVTA UMass Amherst Bus Maintenance Facility Expansion Project, which just rolls right off the tongue. So moved. <laughs> Thank Second. you, Jimmy. Second. Thank you, Sherry. All right, we have to roll call vote again. Sharon Aye. Person. Aye. Aye. Mary Carney. Sorry. Yes. Aye. Denise Barstow Mann. Aye. Courtney Meyer. Aye. Brianna Quinn. Aye. Irene Costello. Great. And I also, Diana West, vote yes. All right. So we have a guest here with us tonight, Marion Rambell, and she's going to tell us more about the project. The floor is yours, Marion. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. And thank you so much for, um, for you know, fitting this in to your meeting um, and voting to do it first. Um, <laughs> So you probably have the the um, the PDF uh, with the letter describing the review and the project. I'll just quickly go through um, the letter. Actually, I can let me share my screen. Go for it. So I have that up. And here. Okay, so you can see it probably. Okay, good. Um, yeah, the first page was the um, UMass Amherst um, reviewed the historical review that we submitted to, um, that actually we submitted to the FTA. So they they did their own review and that this is their concurrence letter that they did not find any um, uh, potential error, potential effect or, well, their potential effect will result in no effect on um, characteristics of historic properties known to the university. So, so then just below it is my letter. And um, so just it's a brief overview. It's um, the project is a bus maintenance garage um, by that is run by PBTA on the UMass Amherst campus in the northwestern corner. And uh, I'll show you a map in a minute. And uh, it's um, just a small portion of the building. Actually, they're going to add two maintenance bays and retrofit and expand two existing maintenance bays. Um, and this will accommodate the maintenance of 60 foot articulated buses, which will be coming, and um, addition of shop support spaces and associated building utility and site modifications just to support the, the bays. So let me get to the, yeah, 
So here's the project location um, on the right. The, uh, that is the, the whole bus maintenance facility garage um, building. Um, and it's, oh, and you might notice uh, just a little disorienting that the north arrow is, um, you know, goes to the upper left. So just a little skewed, but I'm sure you're familiar. <laughs> <laughs> with the campus and the and so this is a little um, zooming in the proposed site plan so the the red area is what would be um, um, built so there's it's it's kind of it's being expanded out a bit so you'll see that on the other plans so there's pictures of um, Existing conditions that um, the corner, the, the, the top left photo was showing the corner, which is like closest to the um, the camera angle, <laughs> the, the red camera angle. So that's the northeast corner and, and just showing the, the uh, current maintenance bay doors. And then for the, and this is what it, uh, the rendering of what it would look like uh, um, upon completion and with a, an articulating bus there. And then this shows the existing on the left, uh, what, it's, what it looks like right now. There are four uh, maintenance bays. And then on the bottom is the proposed plan. So, um, so you can see it's kind of, um, it's expanded out. Um, oh, I'm not sure how many feet, but um, yeah, it's, so it's expanded out and then, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> not much more to say. I mean, they're, they're gonna be doing um, work inside of the existing area and then also, um, you know, expanding the building so that they can add those other, um, the bays. Um, and so, so then, uh, looking at the, here's the Macris database viewer map, and I can try to zoom in a little more. So that's the, um, the, the dashed line is showing approximate project limits. So it's, um, it, it covers just part of the building, the part of the building that will be worked on, and then the, the surrounding parking lot area where the, the, the staging would be for the project and um, a, you know, a construct, construction equipment would be there. So, um, so I looked at the further historical review, um, the area of potential impact and um, uh, which you know, is the extent of the area that's um, defined by in, any identified historic properties with the views of the project and, and without obstructions of the view by structures, topography, vegetation, and or distance. So I looked through the MACRIS database um, and, um, and this, this map appeared and um, uh, so actually, if I can just show you this. So this is the list um, of the state register properties that have potential views of the project. Um, yeah, all of which are located on the, the UMass Amherst campus. Um, two of them were demolished. So the, the first one, the last one. So we don't have to worry about that. And then the other three are all on the... Um, the opposite side of the road of Governor's Drive. So, yeah, so the Macris map shows north, north is going up. So it's a little different orientation from what you've seen, but you can see the, the, the curve of Governor's Drive and, and where the building um, sits there. So the, so there's these, just these three um, the three 
properties, the HAD point zero zero point one thousand and then point one zero zero one point seven nine eight. Um, they're all like UMass Forest and Parks. The point one zero one 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 zero zero one is the greenhouse, um, and and all of this area is forested um, on the opposite side of Governor's Drive from, from the PVTA property. Uh, so that pretty much blocks the view from, from these, these properties. These are, and actually these are inventory pro properties. They're not um, you know, des designated historic yet. So um, yeah, and point 1000 is the just Parks and Parks building. Also the dense vegetation blocks the view. And point seven nine eight is the UMass Forest and Parks garage, and um, and there's actually uh, an auxiliary services warehouse that's located to the just to the right of that on this map, like to the east, and and that blocks the view. I've, I've got Google Maps if you want to take a look at that, but um, but basically. Um, there was no, none of these had had a view of the project. Um, so based on the evaluation, we anticipated that the project would result in no effect on the characteristics of historic properties contained in the state inventory of historic properties. And that's what um, yeah, um, UMass Amherst Planning Department um, concurred with. And um, if, and, I, and I'm not sure if you, um, yeah, I forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, this project is partially funded by the FTA, so it's uh, federal funds and it's subject to Section 106 uh, uh, review. So, so FTA is um, is seeking a letter of something in writing from the the commission. Uh, Stating, I mean, it actually it, it can be concurrence with the no effects, or it can be no comment, and it, or it could be um, comments. So, well, thank you so much for coming and sharing all this information with us. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this project? All right, hearing nothing, do I have a motion to say that we will submit a letter in agreement with the materials presented with us today that there is no effect on the historic landscape of this area with this project? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, roll call vote, Denise Barstow Mans. Yes. Mary Carney. Yes. Courtney Meyer. Yes. Jerry <clears throat> Parsons. Yes. Brianna Quinn. Yes. And Irene Costello. All right, I see you're not accept that as a yes. All right, Marion, we will write up that letter and I'll email it over to you. Um, is there a deadline you want to set for me? Um, soon. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> they're, they're looking. So, um, you know, their their clock um, will start when they receive <laughs> the letter. So, you know, the next you know, couple days would be good, you know, okay. th th this week. I'll try to do it by Friday then. Okay. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for listening and for your help. You're welcome. And I think I'll jump off now. <laughs> great. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, our next agenda item is actually a similar project that's happening along Route 116 in Hadley into Amherst. They're looking for a similar letter that we will present to um, Marion's group there. Um, and so this, they are doing road work on 116. This is um, the best way I can describe it is where you turn off Route 9 onto 116 that kind of connects you up to UMass. Um, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this also has no historic significance or effect on the landscape. I mean, anything historic that had been there, I'm sure, was 
removed or taken down whenever they built that road. Uh, it's outside the North Hadley Historic District. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments about that? I can, I think I have paperwork about that. I could try to pull up if anybody needs to see it. I think my only comment would be they're going to make all the ways we can get out of Hadley difficult. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not hearing any other questions or comments. So do I have a motion to submit a letter that we do not think that there will be any um, effect to historic landscapes for the Route 116 project? So no moved. Second. Second. Okay. Oh, I was asking for a second. Thank you, Denise. All right. Roll call vote again. <laughs> a lot of these tonight. Uh, okay. You guys have moved positions on my screen. So Brianna Quinn. Aye. Sherry Parsons. Aye. Denise Barstow Mann. Aye. Courtney Meyer. Aye. Uh, Mary Carney. Aye. Irene Costello. All right, I saw your aye. Aye, Diane West, also vote yes. And um, I realized I didn't provide my vote for the last vote, so that's also a yes. So motion carries. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks for writing all these letters, Diana. <laughs> um, <I don't laughs> it. They'll look very similar, and they'll be very short. Uh, OK, next up is to talk about our CPA application projects. So did everybody get a chance to look at the sign designs in Espanol? Okay, any questions or comments about those? Wait, only the Spanish ones? Well, we had approved the English versions previously. I noticed some things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, these are the things I notice. Indigenous. Does it have to be capitalized? I don't think it does. I'm sorry. Does what need to be capitalized? The word indigenous. Oh. No. Uh, I'm sorry. So that seems like an easy fix. Okay, cool. I think they're all pretty easy fixes. Okay. Um. Oh, except for the the open field farming, we're, you know how we're like on the national or like on the world. Help me, the um world heritage something. You know what you're referring to, but I, I can't not. Should we mention that? Just a thought. I think. Um... You know, they hold a lot of information already. We're going to link them up to learn even more information. Okay. And I think short and sweet makes more sense for these signs. Yep. Uh, if it's not in the driving tour, we could add it to the driving tour because that hasn't yeah. been recorded yet, right? I think it's in the driving tour. But I'll oh. double check. Are we in a, So, um, I think we are on the World Monuments Fund list. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, okay, you know how it says that that guy can be the operator of the grist mill provided he make a, a good meal? I thought it was just good meal, or it's a? So it's a direct quote, I believe, from Judd. All right. Great. Which I think is why it's reading funny to us. Okay. The shadows on the pictures are not consistent. Okay. And the Russell School box that is yellow is two different yellows. And then also around the signs is white, but I don't know if that's just like a screenshot. And it's like some of them have white and some of them don't. So that might be fine. And that's all I have to add. I'm so sorry, but I didn't see those things before. I didn't read the Spanish ones because I am useless. Yeah, I think it's more for like for layout purposes to make sure that it, it still looks good. Oh yeah, it, yeah, that does look good. Okay. Um, I can double check that, that good meal uh, quote. Thank you. I did look at it in the 
driving tour and it it's the same okay and i just wasn't yeah. sure where it came from that's what makes me think it's a direct quote from judd yeah okay because i would agree it does read kind of funny yes to our modern ears yes Okay, so um, if your recommendations are accepted and changed, would you be okay with right now entertaining a motion to accept the design designs with those changes so we can Absolutely. move forward with applying with the building commissioner's office? That sounded like a motion, so I'll second it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, any further discussion about the signs? Thanks for moving hey. forward. I double checked on Indigenous just to make sure if it's a, like October 9th is Indigenous People's Day. That's it's a holiday. It's yeah, capitalized. Yeah. But in the information about it, it refers to the Indigenous communities with a small I. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion. We have a second. Um, I'm going to do a roll call vote. Um, it looks like Brianna had to step away, so I'll accept an abstention from her at this time. Sherry Parsons? Yes. Denise Barstow Mann? Yes. Courtney Meyer? Yes. Mary Carney? Yes. And I see that Irene submitted an I, and I, Diana West, also vote yes. All right, that might be the last vote we do tonight. So. <laughs> Great work, everyone. All right, I will start, once we get those um, changes back from the designer, I will start on the application process with the building commissioner's office. Everyone cross your fingers and toes that that goes well. I just hey, found what? an indigenous style guide on the internet and they do want it capitalized. Okay. <laughs> For their own style. Oh. They're the only ones who will really care, so. <laughs> That's true. I would give them the nod if it were up to me. Yep. Okay. All right. Great. Then we will capitalize it. Thank you for that resource. It's easier. That means you don't have to change it. Yep. Okay. West Street walking tour. I have not heard back from Margaret Atwood's people, so I think I need to try perhaps emailing her agent and if we don't hear back from that then I would say we've done our due diligence in attempting to get approval from them and since we aren't making a profit off of this I'm not too concerned about getting sued uh Courtney did you ever hear back from Holly Hobbies Holly nope. Hobbies people nope okay I think we're pretty small potatoes and they're not worried about us <laughs> all right um where else is that the last thing we're waiting on Courtney to um, there was one that. thing that I had a question about. Um, this is for 100, uh, 104 West Street. Um, it says around 1900, this is the home of Reverend Dwight, the last pastor of Russell Church. The Russell Church, which had been between 42 West and the former Elmwood Hotel. Blah, 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 blah. And then my question was, oh gosh, I got to pull it up. Hang on. Um, if it's the same location as... Sorry. Was this on the same plot as John Russell Jr.'s house where the regicides were? Does anybody know? I understand that it was in the same location as where the first church was before they moved it. Okay. I do not know off the top of my head if that was the location of the house where the regicides were. Okay. Um, I could try to find out. Um, I mean, the way that it's written now, I don't think we have to specify. I just thought it would be interesting if it happened to be at the same location. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is it John Russell's house? What was his name? John Russell Jr. John Russell. Okay. And it was okay. Reverend White's house um, at 104 West Street. Um, other than that, I think it's uh, good to go. Great. Thank you for all of your work on that. 
Yeah. So should we just wait like a couple more weeks or to see if we hear back from anybody? Yeah, I will try emailing Margaret's agent. I think you've tried a couple different avenues. I have not. I only sent, I only yeah. mailed a physical letter to Canada. Um, and I didn't pay to track it because then I had to fill out a customs form and I didn't want to do that. Yes. Um, so yeah, I would say we can give it a couple of weeks. I'll try to figure out this one last bit of research and then, um, you know, we might, we should probably hold a, an official vote before we send it to the printer because we also need to um, apply for those, figure out how to get the CPA funds to pay for it. Yeah. Mary sent me information, but I didn't look at it too closely. Um, looks like Irene had a question about John Russell. Um, I know I where think John... we... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Courtney. Do we know where John Russell's house was? Um, no. I think there um, is I think John Russell, John Russell Jr., yes, but not senior. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say, I think that's within the the records that exist. We just have to track it down. Okay. Okay. Driving tour. So that is at this point in Alex's and uh, Hadley Media's hands. Um, they have both a um, female presenting voice and a male presenting voice to do the recordings. Um, I have not had an update from him and I realized today at around 4.45 I didn't have this update. So um haven't gotten a response yet to that inquiry. <laughs> um, but it sounds like we might want to add something in. But I think um, the World Monuments Fund thing is in there. It is in there. Yeah. Right, yeah. Great. All right. Any questions about the signs, West Street walking tour, or the driving tour? All righty. Uh, V1 Vodka CPA application. For the record, we did submit a letter in support of the project if a preservation restriction was put on the property. Um, I received a uh, reply from Mary there saying that she had received the letter, but I never heard back anything from Paul. So uh, Denise, what, what happened at the CPA meeting last week? Um, well, Paul was very grateful for the letter and the amount of work that went into it. And the CPA did pass this project to go forward to town meeting. When is town meeting? I don't know. I think it's October 26th. Okay. Um, Diana, are you going to be there? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Unless you think I really need to be there. I think somebody needs to say something from the historical commission, but that, that can be me. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, if you need me to help you write up something, I can do that. Yeah, I can't. I don't know how people get up there without like exactly what they're going to say. <laughs> so I'll be going up there and reading exactly what I'll be saying. All right, I'm just going to make myself a note that I have to do that. But that's, uh, yeah, that's the update. And they, they, we approved that it would only be for exterior work, excluding the ramp. So like the windows and the roof and the, yeah. Hey. Any updates on what's going on with Russell School? So uh, the RFQ was posted um, and we've gotten, they've gotten 38 responses. Uh, I know, I was surprised by that too. So I feel like it's it's a blessing and a curse because now they have 38 things to look through. <laughs> it's gonna mm -hmm. take a long time. Um, but it's good that there's people that are interested in it. So, mm -hmm. all right, great. Um, that's all I got. Do we know anything right? about what people wanted to do? Like, we don't know anything. Okay. No. Yeah, they're all they're all closed meeting staff meetings. So, 
Well, let's just think positive thoughts about it. I will. Okay, preservation restrictions. Um, Courtney, were you working on that? I was. Um, so, so I looked into it and um, coincidentally found uh, a really helpful PowerPoint that uh, the town of Amherst put together when they were looking to Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm ahead. I'm thinking of the demolition delay. Uh, preservation restrictions. No, I have not done anything with that. <laughs> okay. No I will put it on my list. Okay. Table to next meeting. All right. Yes. Now you can talk about the demolition delay. <laughs> so the PowerPoint was really helpful. Um, and uh, let me just go back to where I was. Um. So essentially, the bylaw offers an opportunity to save imminently threatened historical buildings from loss. And then it could also give us, as a committee, more control over what is being demolished in town. Um, and so there are uh, stipulations um, that uh, a building will have to be historically significant, significant and also be of a certain age or older. Um, Amherst, for example, is 75 years old or older. Um, and uh, there are other participating towns that are nearby, Hatfield, Northampton, Amherst, Leverett, East Hampton, Holyoke, they all have them. Um, and so I think Hadley would be a great addition to that list. Um, and uh, typically the um, demolition delay uh, tends to be about a year. Um, so in our Google Drive, there is now um, a folder that says demolition delay bylaw research. Um, so we put a couple documents in here um, that folks can take a look at um, uh, to see sort of what, what the process tends to be. Hey, do we think um, we want to create a smaller task group to focus on this? Guys are really all jumping to join it. <laughs> um, I think that this is something that could be really valuable for town. The town, I mean, recently we have gotten a couple of inquiries about historic buildings in town, about laws around demolishing them, around changing them, and um, really all I can say is that there's just about nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, I mean, we'd like to work with you to make sure it doesn't happen, but ultimately, I can't stop that from happening through legal measures. Uh, I think the fact that just about every town around us uh, has one is a good selling point. People in town love to compete with Hatfield, so we could um, let them know about that Hatfield has one up on us. Um I, but I can also see pushback of like this being too much government oversight. Like, why are you going to tell me what to do with my personal property? Stuff like that. Um, but I think if we point out that there are some really significant historic buildings in town, like the oldest house um, on West Street, like, like if somebody came along and purchased that and wanted to tear it down, I mean, there's not a whole lot of recourse we can go through to stop them from that happening. Um, and I think that we show that there's a whole process to this, that like, we're not just going to put a blanket, no, you can't tear that down. We need to do more research, more, have more understanding about the project. And um, I think the year timeline is good. I like the idea of um, having a sort of a, an idea of like, is something 75 years old or older or a hundred years old or older um, that would be included in that. Uh, I just think, that we do need to have some good solid research into this and a good solid argument um, before we bring it forth to other people as we have gotten pushback in the past from the select board in regards to historic preservation measures. Mm -hmm. So 
does it first need to go through the select board and then it has to go to the bylaw committee? I think it would go to the bylaw committee first. Okay. Then the select board. And then it would have to be passed by two thirds majority at town meeting four. Why two thirds? I believe all bylaws have to be passed by two thirds. Got it. Okay. So those are just the hurdles before us. Yeah. But I think a good information campaign can sway opinions. Um, but we have to get it to town meeting four to really make that case. I, uh, Irene also has a question. Irene. Um, yes and no, Irene. The question is, is there an inventory of historic buildings in town? So there is the MACRIS database that um, our predecessors have added a lot of information into about buildings around town. Um, some entries are more detailed than others. Um, but as far as I know, if such a, if an inventory exists, it would be on paper and it would be in file cabinets that I'm not even sure where they've been moved to at this point. Because where they were is now, I believe, Carolyn Brennan's office. Um, would it be the Historical Commission um, files or something else? I think it would be the Historical Commission files. Okay, because there's not a lot in there. Um, I think all the files, all the files that I saw in there are already on, on macros. They were like printouts of the macros from yeah. the website. So I think any inventory that has been done was done for the applications for the different neighborhoods on the National Register. And when you look through those, and they're all in the Google Drive, um, some buildings have extensive paragraphs about them and others are just a list with a name attributed to them for who built it or who first lived in the house. Um, so yes and no is the answer to that question. But that is a, a good a good place to start. I mean, I guess this just comes with living in town your whole life, just like the knowledge of the fact that like the majority of the houses on West Street and Middle Street are old. A lot of the houses on East Street are old. And then as you kind of spider away from that, a lot of those houses are old. And then when you get up into like the center of North Hadley, you're going to find old houses there. Um, there's a very old house on North Maple Street that was moved there from Amherst at one point. Um, but again, that's just having that town knowledge in your brain. River, River Drive as well. Is that a project you want to take on, Irene? <laughs> I saw that smile. All right, think about it. Well, Brianna also wasn't, um, I think she was out of the room when we asked, so. Brianna, do you want to be involved in a <laughs> task group about um, researching demolition delay bylaws? Oh, yes. Um, Courtney and I had emailed briefly about that. Um, Sure. Sure. <laughs> Happy to take that on. Also, I like the idea of a register of his historic buildings. I feel like that's smart to have cataloged. I don't, you know, I, I don't know if there's a way to access those files that you're talking about that may potentially exist, but I think it's, it's not a bad plan. So they are all online. You just have to kind of know where to look for them. Um, I guess the first stop could be that we linked from our page on the town website to the MACRIS database. I don't know if there's a way we could um, link directly to the Hadley listings. The database isn't super intuitive. I was on it yesterday trying to look up information about a house on Middle Street. Um, oh, Denise, we need to update our membership list here. Um, 
we could try to at least link that up to here to our little web page. All right, so Courtney and Brianna are going to work on the demolition delay bylaw. Um, if anybody else wants to join them on that journey, I encourage you to do so. Uh, okay, any other questions or comments about demolition day delay bylaws or inventory of the store building? Oh, thank you, Irene. Oh, Irene, thank you. All right, I'll make sure you guys have each other's contact information. I just looked to see if there was any kind of listing of our historic buildings. And there is a list with a state, but it only includes 11 buildings. Hmm. So we have to define historic as well. I mean, how old is historic? Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't we add that to a, a future agenda item? That can be a future project. Okay, uh, is there any other new business we need to talk about that was not brought before the commission prior to our agenda being posted? Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask this now, but um, the dentist office that we talked about on, on Route 9, what's going on with that? I have not heard anything further from them. Um, I could reach out and see what's going on. Um, I could try to find out if they did actually purchase it. I mean, that property transfer would have been publicly, publicly posted. Yeah. So that shouldn't be too hard to learn. Um, I mean, they were interested in working with us and they were interested in saving the building, which were all positives. Um, but like I had my little spiel before, ultimately we can't do much to stop them if they do de determine to tear down the building. Yeah. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, so next meeting date. So we, um, Typically try to meet every other month unless there is something we need to meet about more critically in between. So our next meeting date will put us into November. And um, the 21st is the week of Thanksgiving, which might prove to be difficult, um, or we could do the 28th. I cannot do the 21st. I can do the 28th. Are people go with the November 28th? November 28th? Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at October. There's a chance I'll be flying to Los Angeles that day, but okay. other than if I'm on the plane, I'll be able to make it. All right. Thank you. I'm available. That should be, that should be okay for me. All right, let's do November 28th. And um, if I have anything more pressing, then I will send around an email in about two weeks to see if okay. we need to meet in October. Motion to adjourn. Um, I just want to add one more point of clarification for anybody who doesn't know. So um, we are bound by open meeting laws and we are allowed to meet via Zoom because of a law passed by um, our state government during COVID, but then extended through, I believe, 2025. So as long as we publicly post the agenda with the Zoom link allowing anybody to attend, that is allowed. But just so for the time being, we will continue to meet on Zoom. It works best for the majority of us. In terms of getting together in person, that would officially have to be a posted meeting. Um, I would need to talk more with Carolyn Brennan about the parameters of that. It could just be that we get together and it is open to the public to come, but could be a nice opportunity for us to meet each other in person, but also the public wanted to meet us as well. It just might get a little sticky in terms of, we wouldn't be able to like really discuss historical commission matters unless we had a posted agenda with that information on it. Um, Courtney and I went to a webinar about open meeting laws and it was pretty strict <laughs> and there's a lot of things you have to follow. 
Okay, now I will, oh, does anybody have any questions? Oh, Irene. So Irene, as long, okay, so not, this is not me being underhanded in any way. So if we meet a quorum, which is four people, and we didn't have a posted agenda publicly for people to come, that is a problem. As your task group is three people, that would not be a problem for you to be able to discuss your project research. That's also why all my emails go out BCC'd because as soon as someone else responds to my full email, it's considered that we've met a quorum and now we are in violation of open meeting law. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, if you have any questions in the interim, please feel free to reach out. You have my email address. Um, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a second. Second. All those in favor, roll call vote, Denise. Aye. Courtney. Aye. Mary. Aye. Sherry's not at her computer screen, so she abstains. Brianna. Aye. And I saw that Irene said aye in the chat, and I also vote yes. Yeah.